gonna ask you a couple questions. No right or wrong answers, just whatever you think, okay? How old is your mommy? Um, um she is 34 years old. I can't remember. My mommy never told me. 43. My dad told me this morning. How much does she weigh? I don't know a lot. How much she weighs, though. No. And we do like a hundred and two hundred pounds. She lost four pounds. Was she trying to lose four pounds? What is your mommy's favorite food? Sushi, for sure. Noodles, chocolate, meat, salad. She can't have sushi, but she really likes it. Well, she does like In and Out. That's my favorite. What does mommy say to you all the time? I love you. I love you. Uh, don't do that. Hurry up and let's go. She says, when you bite your nails, you gotta stop. She says to eat or else I'll get grumpy. Um, how does mommy make you feel? Good. Sometimes it makes me a little scared. Happy. 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 Okay, show me how much you love your mommy. Like forever. Like this much. Hmm? Um, the sun and back. All the time. Motherhood is, it really is a calling because you have to be selfless. And that was very difficult for me at first. Putting your children first beyond, um, beyond what I could have ever imagined. It's, uh, it's the best kind of sacrifice though, because you know that you're doing it for good and, and there's nobody else that I would ever make those kind of sacrifices for. Whether you adopt or you give birth, you could even be a mother to an adult. Like, there's an essence of just looking out for someone. I love my mom, but I don't know that she gave me the best example of what a mom should be. Although she physically did stuff for us and took us to school and practices, emotionally she wasn't very available. I'm very transparent with my girls. They've seen me cry a lot. <laughs> and um, I feel it's important for them to know that I struggle too. What I remember well about my mother is her laughter. Um, I think it brought us through the hard times. And um, it just let me know that, yeah, things would get better. And nothing was too serious. After kind of worrying and losing it, <laughs> she'd come back to prayer and come back to remembering who God is and what He's able to do. And that, I brought that with me. My mom is pretty much, she's, she's the number one thing that introduced God to my life. Um, she was at the beginning of my walk with God and she helped me and she struggled with me and fought for me. Um, and she, she was probably the most crucial point, of course, besides the grace and power of God um, in, my, in my faith with Christ. I've seen my wife, I've seen women in, in my life struggle and look to God. And that, if you do that, it's not the struggle. It's not that it's bad to struggle or turn away or do anything, but from my sisters to my wife to my mom to my grandma, I had those struggles or turnaways, but <laughs> they went back. Uh, the worthiness of a mom, I, I, to understand that, just try to remove moms from the society, from our culture. What would, what would life be without mom? It would be empty, it would be uncaring, it would be dads trying to fix everything and not knowing what to do because mom is the, the glue that holds so many families together. And so uh, without mom, 
There is no worthiness. She is the worthy one of the family. Oh, yes. My goodness. Much more than just giving up. Mm. Yesterday, I felt like giving up. Yeah. Yeah, there, there was a time, um, you know, when your child is sick, that's, you're trying to work a job, you're trying to pay the bills, you're trying to take care of the sick child. You got pressures at work not to take off time. And uh, I remember thinking that, wow, maybe I'm not really cut out for this. When my daughter was two and she was in the church nursery and I went to pick her up after Bible study, and she had bit another kid in class. And so they told me, they're like, she bit another child and, and if this happens again, she's not gonna be able to come back. And I felt like such a failure. I, was dri I remember crying, driving home that, you know, my daughter was never gonna amount to anything because she bit a child in the nursery. And, and you know, just those days where, where their failures feel like our failures. And um, finally, I think maturing beyond that and getting to the point where it's like, they are gonna fail, they're gonna make mistakes, but that doesn't mean I'm a bad mom. Oh yes. My gosh, and I didn't think I would ever get through it. I didn't think they would ever get through it, and I thought I was destroying them. Oh no, God was just destroying the parts in us that should never have been there. But God was uh, my biggest um, advocate. He um, just said, Cheryl, I gave this child to you, and only you can give this child the love that I put in you to give to her. They're loved, that they're valuable, um, that they're perfect just the way they are. To love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, above all else, nothing else. Just that and everything else will follow. That if God gives them a calling, that they not shy away from it, but be like Isaiah and say, here I am, and step out in faith. And I, I always, Think about this. I want my daughters to, to just roar, roar out to the world and let them be themselves, even if it calls being different. But that difference is going to make them stand out. That difference is going to point them to other people that are going to want what they have. And what they have is Christ, Christ within them. I commission you. In the mighty and powerful name of Jesus, I commission you for the work of the gospel as a minister of Jesus Christ to live in your world as an ambassador of the kingdom. I commission you in the work of healing and serving and loving and reconciliation. You are an emissary of justice and your work from now on is to put things right, to call those things that are not as they will be. Stop waiting for someone else to say you count, that you matter, that you have worth, that you have a voice, a place, that you are called. Because darling, you are valuable. You abide in love. You can rest in your God-breathed worth. Can't you see God has called you by name? He has written your name on the palms of his hands. You are knitted together. You are loved. You have been rescued already. I call you to joy, friend. I set you apart in your regular walking around life for the daily work of liberation and love. Proclaim the gospel with your hands and your feet and your voice to every soul in your care and influence. May your soul long for prayer in the scriptures. May you share your meals. May you sit alone in silence outside under the sky and be satisfied. May you hold babies and comfort the dying and be a voice of knowledge tempered with grace and wisdom. May you never forget how to sing and be silly. May you be fearless and may you eat good food. I pray that no matter your tool or method, mothering, preaching, cooking, writing, organizing, washing, teaching, building, money making, all your whole life encompassing it all, that you will walk in the knowledge of the sacredness and purpose of your calling. I pray for dreams and visions for the active leading of the Holy Spirit. And I pray that you would never, ever forget that Abba is very, very fond of you. 
If you are surrounded by jelly-faced toddlers or thousands of longing, hungry souls, or if you lift your head to find yourself in a hospital or a back alley or a church or an orphanage or your own suburban kitchen, if you are given a voice for dozens or only one other soul, you are a minister. Feel it, say the words. You have been commissioned for the work of the gospel. In Christ Jesus, you have. I send you out. I send you out to the spot where you are right now. You are right where you belong. You have everything you need to begin and we will walk it out together. Keep your eyes open for the signs of God's presence. He's already at work in your world, revealing his ways to us all. You get to be part of it and me too, and me too. And me too, and me too. We're in this together. Let's do it together. Let's do this together.